That mantra was also not to be spoken precisely. Uh, it's a mantra to Vajrayogini, uh, Dakini in the Buddhist tradition. Uh, they hold the feminine energy in Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, I'm going to talk about gender and a little bit about sex. And as usual, it's a combination of theorizing, speculating, and opinion, and report of experience. So let's start with the speculation. A uh, very fine yogini in LA gave a talk, and in it she outlined uh, the um, situation with the man-woman thing. And as she explained it, on the physical level, the male is active and the female is receptive. On the emotional level, the female is active and the male is receptive. On the intellectual or mental level, again, the male is active, the female is receptive. And on the spiritual level, the female is active and the male is receptive. Um, and then, given the situation of your um, social well being, um, one can begin to take on the characteristics of the other set. So, um, a male can be spiritually active. Uh, a female can be spiritually receptive. Likewise, there are a lot of smart women around. Um, a woman can be active um, in the mental sense and many males are pretty receptive in that sense. Um, and likewise with emotions, uh, uh, I decided to become a sensitive man, not realizing that I would fall down the rabbit hole and uh, it's free fall, baby. Uh, okay. Um, likewise for the rest of it. So we all partake of the uh, aspects of the other gender. And rather than pushing them away and putting them in the dungeon of our ego, you know, down back below the uh, uh, various subconscious barriers, uh, lock it away, in other words, uh, it's better to um, express it and see what it is or recognize it and see what it is. Uh, one of the problems with the gender issue in this century, uh, maybe, well, I don't know if, except, especially in the COVID era, all these things have been happening for a long time. They just come to fruition all of a sudden. So I decided to come to fruition and see if I couldn't uh, open my heart a little bit wider. You know, I was in my head too much. Um, so that's the effort, and it's a weird way to do it, but I'm having a good time. Um, of course, there's other ways to look at gender. Um, you could be a bigot about it. Or you could stop being a bigot about it. Now, I don't expect anybody from the other side of the street is going to hear this in the first place, but uh, uh, if one happens to do, uh, if you widen your perspective a little bit and increase your tolerance a little bit, you'll find there but for a fortune go you and I. Um, I have a friend who's a sexologist and she turned me on to a whole bunch of um, ideas. Um, I won't repeat most of them here. I don't think I've digested them all. But she explained something about the spectrum that I didn't know. And the fact of the matter, and this is true of everybody, um, 
whether you're in the counterculture or not, whether you're in the rainbow tribe or not. And I should do a footnote. Um, rainbow in Tibetan means something entirely else. A rainbow body is what you grow when your physical body at death simply vanishes and all that's left is hair and nails. Um, so the rainbow is um, an emblem of the ephemerality of life because the rainbow is there, but you couldn't touch it doesn't seem to be there, and yet you see it. And the rainbow comes and goes rather rapidly because a whole complex set of conditions are needed to produce a rainbow. Now, the rainbow in the social sense, of course, is uh, uh, the gay pride emblem. And, uh, well, let's see. We've got LGBTQIA. And if you unpack that, you realize there's a pretty wide spectrum of um, uh, situations and styles uh, within that range of letters. So lesbian, can't talk to it much. Um, I did hang out in a lesbian bar in San Francisco a time or two, and it was a very eye-opening experience. I went in there. And the music was good, so I bought a beer and I sat down and listened to the music. And about the second or third song, I looked around, realized everybody in the bar was women. And then, oh, okay, that's what that is. And meanwhile, the women, well, we got a tourist here. Uh, let's give them the works. And so uh, a couple of women sat at my table and one of them uh, uh, talked to the other one and spread her legs and said, how long have you been gay? And uh, the conversation went on, and I'm, uh, of course, astounded, but interested in who they are and what it is. Uh, but I don't know what it is, okay? Um, bisexuality, yeah, a lot of people are bisexual. Um, many hide it. Uh, many don't even know they're bisexual. But uh, there's a genetic component to all this. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Gay, well, that, that uh, usually refers to the um, male queer scene. Uh, and then T, again, can't speak much to that. I, I know a couple of trannies, uh, two in the male direction, one in the female direction, but I don't really understand uh, what they go through. Uh, likewise, intersex. They're the, the people that are the hardest up against it of anyone because they're born with multiple organs or no organs. And what happens is the doctors have to decide, well, which sex is that one? And they can't tell because the organs are scrambled. So what do they do? They do surgery. And uh, again, my sexologist friend said, and those intersex people, they're like, because they've been damaged by the um, insistence on ironclad divisions between male and female, which hurts the males as much as the females. You know, th this is all bullshit. It's a, it's a continuum, okay? And everybody's someplace on the continuum, but, um, uh, pause. Well, uh, sorry for the blank space. Uh, I don't have editing uh, skills yet. Ah, uh, so it's all off the cuff, uh, spontaneous. Where was I? Oh yeah, I had intersex. Uh, again, I've never met an intersex person, so I don't know what that is. Uh, 
And then A was just added. I assume that means androgyne. Um, I guess if I had to identify with anything, I would call myself an androgyne. But why call myself anything? You know, the fact of the matter is we're uh, not only externally a spectrum and a continuum, but we're internally a spectrum and a continuum. I have my feminine moments. I have my macho moments. I have my neutral moments. And I assume everybody else does too. So we actually vary on the gender, gender spectrum over time, depending on the situation that we've got. You know, if you're a bunch of loggers, there's only one guy, right? And that's the machoist logger of the lot. Uh, okay, that's how that game is played. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the situation is muddied up by bigotry and intolerance. And um, by cultural taboos, by what I would call distorted Puritanism. And um, I'm not knocking Puritans if they want to uh, go for that kind of physical and moral purity, but it's a pretty limited version of purity because what really is pure is the infinite luminous emptiness. And that is a legacy of all of us, no matter where we are in the little letter spectrum or outside of the box entirely, uh, doesn't matter. The main thing is, can we all get along? And that question has been in the air for a long time. And um, I would say that Black Lives do matter. Take care. Jesus. <coughs> okay, what did we do? We just did it.